So um, we're going to start. And this session is on, technically, it's on uh, what you can do with all the, the massive amounts of data that, that big sites like uh, Imgur, YouTube, and Reddit are gathering. And we will talk about that, but we're likely to um, slide over into some other topics, and especially topics that you bring up. So why don't we introduce ourselves, um, starting. Hey, guys. Um, I'm Alan Schaff, or Mr. Grimm on Reddit, and I created Imgur. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm Kevin Alaka. I'm a YouTube's trends manager. So I manage our YouTube's trends site and uh, do some of the community and, uh, and programming. <laughs> no, not, not quite the same. Uh, I'm Brian Simpson. I'm a programmer and admin at Reddit. I'm David Weinberger. I'm at the Berkman Center, and I write about the internet. So, uh, and I'm the moderator. So um, we thought that we would begin with Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I don't need your condescension. <laughs> um, so we, we've prepared a, a, a PowerPoint deck for you, which we would like to share with you, um, starting with, with Kevin. It's a very fancy deck. Uh, so yeah, we just, I, we thought, you know, I thought it would be interesting to start with just some basic stats about how big we actually are, if this is called too big to know. And uh, I think a lot of us interact with YouTube all, you know, on a daily basis, some of us, um, but we don't actually think too much about the scope of, of what happens on there at any given time. So these are some of the big stats. This, this, um, this, is, this month is our seventh birthday, and uh, we're, we're now averaging four billion views a day. And um, last year, we, we, we pulled in this, this one trillion views, which is a number that we're starting to get so big that it's, it's, it's almost hard to actually comprehend how big that actually is. Um, and I think one of my favorite stats is that we, we've recently hit the mark of, of having one hour video uploaded every second on the site from, from all over the world. And I, I, I added those, those stats in there about, um, about what countries we're launched in because um, we had the, the panel earlier about about, um, about memes or around the world, and YouTube is a, absolutely a global place, and um, there's incredible things happening on there all over the world every day, so. Okay, great. Brian. Yeah, so uh, our, our stats are a little bit more rudimentary. I just asked for what, what was on the most recent day, and uh, we get millions of votes. Um, we're up to a lot of comments, a lot of links a day. Um, and I think we're almost at, uh, Three billion page views a month, or something. You need to come closer. Can you hear me now? <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, can you repeat the page view number? Oh yeah. So we're uh, we hit two billion page views in December, I think, and we're about approaching three billion uh, per month, um, pretty soon. Alan. So uh, Imgur now has about 500,000 images uploaded every single day. Um, and then that uh, is about 100 terabytes of data transferred per day uh, from about a billion images every day. So that's obviously, it's um, way bigger than uh, we thought it was ever going to be, but I'll get into that a little later. And uh, so the analytics, uh, we're at 40 million uniques per month just recently hit 2 billion page views, and uh, that's actually 11 pages per visit. So every time someone goes to Imgur, they're actually looking at 11 pages. Um, it's probably why we hit 2 billion so quickly. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about um, the beginning, because that's where we are now. And in the beginning, uh, it was literally never thought it was ever going to be that big. Um, Imgur was just a personal project that I created in my spare time when I was an undergrad to solve uh, Reddit's image hosting problem at the time. And then I released it to the Reddit community, which probably all of you guys, um, and you just, you loved it. You totally embraced it, um, started using it for every image you want to put on Reddit. And, uh, you know, as Reddit grew, image, or Imgur grew, and uh, as Imgur grew, Reddit grew. And uh, now here we are today at you know, 2 billion page views a month and 40 million uniques. 
So that's a lot of data. There's a lot of data flowing through. Do you, what do you capture and what do you use it for? Since this is, you know, this is about big data, so we'll start there. Uh, so, I mean, we have, like, massive traffic logs, and we use it for uh, some of our advertising metrics, but, like, we really don't use it to the extent that it probably could be used. Like, I, I have in my mind we could do all these, like, amazing things we had people to put on to just, like, digging into the data and, like, figuring out how people are interacting and stuff. But for the most part, it's just there, and we are aware that it's there and ignore it. So... I think in our case, most people here are actually probably familiar with all the data that we capture because it's available to everybody who uploads a video. Um, we have a pretty pretty robust uh, analytics suite that has you know everything from how long people watch your video, where they're watching it, how old they are. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of that stuff gets gets captured there for everybody to be able to use to be able to program their channel. Um, and so I mean we we have we have a lot and we try to turn over as much of it as possible um, to everybody who who creates stuff. So for Imager, um, we have what's called the Imager Gallery, which is the, uh, the spot on Imager where you go to to kind of just you know, spend time looking at funny pictures. And we use our data to actually populate that section. So we, we parse you know, how many petabytes of logs to try to find out what is the most viral image at the time. And then uh, once it passes like a series of tests, uh, like if it's got you know so many retweets on Twitter, it's got so many upvotes on Reddit, um, it's got you know it's on Tumblr and it's kind of elsewhere on the web, um, then we uh, and then it passes a certain level of you know popularity, then it ends up in the gallery, and uh, so that's what we do with all of our data. Um, but what's kind of interesting about that is the stuff that ends up in the gallery didn't become popular on Imager. It came popular organically through the web. And we, we looked at the data and found out, um, okay, this picture is coming from you know, Tumblr. And then it's also linked to on Reddit. And you know, it's got you know, X amount of retweets. So once, you know, it turns out that's a pretty good way of measuring how viral something is, you know, because it's actually measuring the spread around the internet. And so once, um, you know, we realize, you know, this, it must, like, this image looks like it's pretty popular. It's on all these different websites. It's got this many views. Um, you know, then it ends up in the gallery. I mean, I should actually add to, you brought up the point uh, about, you know, the browsing experience, right? And that's also a thing that, that we have uh, on YouTube um, and that everybody here is probably familiar with, you know, different instances on the site where, where things are ranked based on, you know, how long they're watched, you know, who's watching them, where they're coming from. We have a whole bunch of different stuff, um, what categories they're in, et cetera, uh, as well. Uh, I think that a lot of people here are familiar with those, but we do switch up those algorithms a lot. There's a lot in different places. Um, yeah, there's a, lot, there's a lot of interesting stuff to be played with. So usually w when the topic of um, data and tracking personal data and big data comes up, at least in the mainstream, the two issues that arise are uh, privacy and then the filter bubble. That is, um, uh, this is a, um, Eli Pariser's uh, term for a community that has uh, information filtered according to the norms and preferences of the community so their vision of the world actually gets shrunken. They only see what their community sees. How much, so let's start with privacy. Uh, how much of your day do you spend worrying about uh, privacy concerns? Uh, I mean, we get a lot of requests for people to take down images um, that are linked on Reddit. But uh, like to, to, act, to participate on Reddit, you don't need to give us any information about you. So uh, we don't have too much trouble in that area. Um. Yeah, same for Imager. You can actually upload an image without having an account. Um, we really don't have any data on you at all. Uh, and, the, and the Imager experience isn't really personalized in any way. Um, so privacy. Although you have although, your server logs, so there is a track. That's true. We could potentially put together some sort of graph based on IP address, um, but it's really the best we could do. Um, however, we get a lot of uh, DMCA requests for people who want to you know, take down their copyrighted content. Um, but you know, as long as you comply, it's not an issue. So Kevin? Yeah, well, you know, for us. You're, you're, you're the guy who actually is these guys have huge buckets of data that they're not even looking at. 
and any good VC would tell them that they're, you know, they're crazy. That's where the value is. YouTube obviously um, is much more careful and has much more of this data available to it. Yeah, I mean, well, the, the question, the first, the original question was how much of your day do you spend worrying yes. about, about privacy, which thankfully for me is, doesn't have to be that much, right? Because there is a whole bunch of other people who that is their whole day, uh, they're worrying about that stuff. And, uh, and, and rightfully so, because there are a lot of instances where the, these things get complicated. And, um, you know, I think that broadly, you know, what we've tried to do is give, you know, everybody control of, of, of that themselves, you know, and, and be able to control what gets exposed where. Do you, like, do I want comments on my video? Do I not? We try to give that over to each individual user. And that's, I think, the blanket, the way that, that it works for us. Um, and, and in terms, so this, I think, actually, well, we'll see. Um, we'll see how much it applies to Imgur. Uh, the, the filter bubble, the personalization of what you see based upon your social network's um, preferences. Um, how, much do you think, how much do you think that happens? How much do you worry about it? What's there to, uh, to work against that? Uh, I mean, for Reddit, that's a big issue. Um, if you just subscribe to the front page subreddits, you just see sort of this weird echo chamber of like Reddit ideas. Um, and then we, we have a lot of discussion in the office about what's the best way to teach people about other subreddits. And one way we, we thought of is looking at voting activity. So if you vote the same way that someone else does, you might recommend uh, some of the links they vote on to the other person. But then you're going to run into that, that very issue that you're just going to be kind of in a little insulated space where everyone is just liking the same things and not seeing anything new. I think Alan and I are both in an in interesting spot on this, right? Because we, we both have the, the, the unit, the, the social unit, right? The thing that, that people are, are discussing, the idea itself, right? And then that gets then spread all over the place. You, you know, there's, we, I think 700 YouTube videos are shared on Twitter every minute. Uh, you know, a lot, Reddit's a, a major refer, uh, you know, of, of YouTube traffic. There, there's all sorts of, of places where those videos are getting viewed, and, and it's often in those places where the conversation is also taking place. I mean, conversation happens on YouTube, it happens on social networks, it happens on, on uh, social bookmarking sites like Reddit, and, uh, and so it's, it's hard, actually, I think, to wrap our heads around that a little bit, because a lot of that is happening a little bit more broadly. I mean, on the site, you, the, the way that, you know, we're all familiar, is that YouTube, you could subscribe to channels, right? So then, yeah, that's where you get into that, that space. But um, I think because we have so many places of or, organic discovery of, of related videos, et cetera, you do kind of, I think we've all found ourselves going down the rabbit hole of, of things uh, on that right-hand right, right -hand side. Um, so it's a, it's a uh, there's a, a lot of different ways in which you come across content. And I think um, it's hard to, I think, think about it broadly like that. Yeah, exactly. And speaking about the whole rabbit hole effect, um, so images experience is not personalized, but uh, you still end up getting into that flow of uh, you see one image and you want to see the next one. And uh, you know, then you want to see the next one and then the next one. And we kind of coined a term called instant gratification, where, I mean, that's what imager is all about. You see something and you immediately have a reaction towards it. And, uh, and then you want to see something else. And then you immediately have a reaction towards that. And you don't really need to spend you know, a couple minutes watching a video. Um, you just spend you know, seconds looking at an image. And uh, that's part of where imager success comes in. It's like, even though we're not personalized, we still give you like, tons of great content um, that everyone you know, lo either loves or either you know, immediately hates. And, but you can, you can upvote and you can downvote. So uh, you get into this effect of just looking at one thing after another. And, um, you know, that's, I guess that's the fun thing about it. Which sort of heads us towards a, a different area, and one that I, I'm personally particularly interested in, which is here are three sites that are scaled up massively. I mean, just beyond belief. You can't even wrap your head, head around some of the numbers. And yet, in, at each of these, people frequently feel a very intimate connection, both to the site and to other people there. Which is really unpredictable. You know, in the, in the age of mass communication, it was we, before the net, we assumed mass communication meant alienation. You don't feel connected to anything, to the to the program or to the other people who are watching it. Here we have massively scaled sites where um, intimacy, intimate connection, real personal connection, um, exists. So, so how do you do that? How did that happen? <laughs> Well, so you know, I'm I'm the the YouTube's the oldest here, right? And so uh, 
it's very interesting that question because you know I've been thinking about this with, with that seven year anniversary thing coming up. You know, seven years ago, if you wanted to upload a video from your your cell phone, just that simple thing like that wasn't it was a very hard thing to do, and you couldn't spread things very easily. So like YouTube started out as just that was the, the idea it was like, hey, I should just be able to just post my video and have and whoever I want be able to see it. It's a very simple thing, and uh, then when you just turn that, it's a very powerful thing though because when you turn that that over you do get all these, these things that happen, all these, these communities that spring up. Uh, you know, I think that Chad and Steve could, could never have, have envisioned all of the things that people in this room have created, all the things that happen on the site on any given day. Uh, you know, revolutions playing out on the site, major events, um, music, you know, concerts, all, all these ki kinds of things. But, I mean, at, at the end of the day, video is still a very, very powerful medium, right? And I think that video in itself builds connection cause with, with the audience. That's why it's so popular in our culture. Uh, and and that's, a, that's a major part of it. But you know, the, when you do turn things over like that and you make it very simple to share things, communities around anything can, can form, all these niche things. One of my, my favorite things, there's a, a group of people who are really in elevators uh, on YouTube. And they like just they'll go into an elevator, and maybe maybe one of you is here, uh, but they'll just go into an elevator and be like, "This is an Otis 7550. It goes two <laughs> meters per second, you know." And they like do the whole thing, and then they'll post a video, and then someone will be like, "Oh, is that the one in the Bank of America Tower?" And they're like, "Yeah, I haven't been there yet." And then so they'll make videos <laughs> together of that, you know. And I and I, I saw this this kid, uh, this d this disabled boy who him and his dad. That's what they do every Saturday, and they made their like 200th video was going to this elevator, this very special elevator they hadn't been to yet. Uh, and, and these are like things that, I mean, nobody could have predicted, but just the, the, the ability to spread the, the medium the, is, is what I think makes those connections happen.